The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to this uh, one webinar. It's uh, 11 o'clock so I'd like to uh, get started. First I'd like to thank you for attending this webinar and uh, I hope it's a useful webinar for you that uh, you can use it in uh, your all everyday practice. We're going to talk today about two topics. The first is the system characteristic module and the second one is the pump energy module. During this webinar, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them. My colleague uh, Ivo Potov is available and he will try to answer your questions during the webinar. At the end of the webinar, as usually, we have a short Q&A session so you can still also ask your questions then. So, as said, basically we're going to go, go to two modules of one half. First is the system characteristic module and included in that is also pump curves and the second is the pump energy module. So let's get started with the first one. The system characteristic module is uh, used to determine the system characteristic of a system. This can be a simple pipeline but it can also be a more complex branch system. And next thing which you can do with it is to design your pumps, check if your pumps can operate at a proper point. So let's just go to Wanda to show you how it works and what you can do with it. So what we have here is a pumping station, pipeline and a discharge point. So this for example a typical sewage system, so this would be the sewage treatment plant and this is your uh, sewage pumping station. To make use of the, the system characteristic module you need to make some small changes to the model. First thing you have to put in a bound queue for the system characteristic which is with the S in it. You can just drag and drop it. You connect it to the node of your pumping station. The next thing you have to do is you have to disuse your entire pumping station. Let's do that. Then if you're going to look at this QS bound, you have to give some inputs. The first thing is the maximum capacity which you expect the pumping station to operate it. And for this case it's uh, 12,000 cubes per hour. The next thing which you have to put in is the suction level. You can easily look what suction level here. It's minus 2.5 meters. And just fill it in. So now we have everything ready. Now we can jump to the system characteristic module, which you can open via the model, me model menu and then system characteristic, or if you like, Alt F5. And if you open it, you get this window. And the first thing you have to do, you have to create a new set of system characteristics. You can easily do that by clicking on the new button. You have to specify a name for it. By default, it's the case name. So for now, I think, okay, that's okay. And then you can create, start creating system characteristics. It's basically very easy. You just push the create button, give a name. Let's call this one the basic case. Say, okay. Now it's doing some steady state calculations to determine the system characteristic. And then here below, you can click the view chart button. And we have here a nice view of the system characteristic of the system. So let's change a little bit. For example the war roughness in the system. It's now five millimeters so that's relatively high so let's make it a little bit less so let's put it to one millimeter. And we again do create and now I call it K is one millimeter. Okay. Again does some calculations. Now you can see I have two system characteristics and if I click on view chart, I see them both in here. So if the basic age with the war roughness of 5 millimeters, which is <coughs> higher than, of course, as you can expect, the low war roughness. 
So, yeah, as you might understand, this is a very simple system, so it's not very useful to use this because you can easily do it with Excel or just back on the envelope. So, let's go to jump to a little bit more complex system. We have, the, again, the same pumping station, but now we have another pumping station which is also going to supply to the same pipeline. That makes it already a little bit more difficult. Basically, I replaced the side pumping station, I replaced it with a Q-bound. I start putting in at zero cubes per hour, so there's no flow. And let's go again to the system characteristic. I'm going to make a new set for case two. So create, um, let's call it zero cubes per hour side flow. So that's one, and now the can also supply at most 5,000 cubes per hour. So I also have to take that one into account. Just put it in and I say create, say 500 cubes per hour side flow. And to read a little bit, and as you can see, it's again in graph and I can plot it. And now you can see it makes it makes a difference because if this pumping station is supplied, the pressure will rise at the connection point, so the other pumping station will see a higher head and needs more uh, at the end needs to supply more heads to come to the same discharge. So this is still, of course, a very simple system. You can, of course, see for more much more complex systems, you can do the same. Let's now have a look at this side, where we can add pump curves. All we have to do that is going to set the pumps to use, so they are in use. And if you look at the pump, you have to specify additional, the required speed. So let's put it at 500 RPMs, which is also the weighted speed. If I then click Create, it create it's going to create a the pump curve of the pump pumps which you have selected. So this time it's only one pump at 500 RPM. Click OK. So if you chart, you can see here it's just a pump curve. What I can also do is select two pumps to create. Now if you, you see for one pump and for two pumps. And of course we can do the same for three pumps. And for four pumps. So basically we have now for all the combinations we have curves. And now if we also select the system curve, it's a few chart. And I can see I have the pump curves and system curves and then I have the operating points for the different pumps in operation. And so I can easily check what are the flow rates which are feasible within the system? But that's not all. So we're going to look, for example, at only one pump. You can also select here that I'm going to also include the efficiency curve, so the QHE. If I plot it, and I see the green line is my efficiency curve, and then I can easily see, okay, this is my operating point. So I'm a little bit on the right of my best efficiency point, and that might not be uh, acceptable. So, then you can see that already in this, this is easy to do steps. So you can also do it, for example, for C pumps, and then you can see, okay, this is nice as the best efficiency point, so that's a good operating point. The final thing I want to show you here is that instead, if you put a required speed, what you also can do, you can put it lower than the weighted speed, for example, at 250 RPMs, to disuse one of the pumps and then you can say create and I have three pumps at 250 RPM. So I say okay. And now view only the QH graphs. You can see this is for at 500 RPMs and this is at 250 RPM, so that's below 
system curve, so that will not work. So maybe you have to put it a little bit higher, 350. And then we can also look at the... As I can see, okay, if I have variable speed pumps, I can see, okay, this is going to be my the working area of the pumps from this point to this point. So with help of this module, you can easily, first of all, determine the system characteristic for different modes of operation, so for different wall roughness, so different water levels, or if you have different uh, supply points or demand points, you can also take that into account. And if you have the system curves, you can e easily include some pump curves to check what is going to be the operating range and also what is um, the efficiency of the pumps and are they operating within their specs or not. So it makes it an easy tool to basically do the basic design of your system and do some selection for your pumps. So, that was the system characteristic module. Let's now go to the pump energy module. <coughs> the purpose of this module is to determine the optimated, optimum op pump operating range. And uh, it's, you can use it for pump stations where you have different types of pumps. So, for example, I just showed you for there are the same pumps, and it's, it's typical for sewage systems. But for drinking water systems, you have uh, sometimes you have different types of pumps. You have small pumps, some bigger pumps, and really big pumps. And in those cases, you can use this to optimize to minimize your energy usage by looking at the operating ranges of your pumps. And to show you that this really works, uh, we did some work together with uh, Brabant Water. Brabant Water is the drinking water company in the province of Brabant in the Netherlands. They have about uh, 33 production sites where they uh, produce water and supply it to the networks. And they started optimizing the pump schedule. And they did it on based on frequency data of demand, so they, they know what the uh, demand series are, and the system characteristics, which of course you can create with the system characteristic module as I showed, just showed you. And based on this data, they, uh, for pump compensation, they uh, optimize the energy users, and at the end they saved 520 megawatt hours, which is about 8% of their total power usage, so that's a nice improvement. So this really works. So let's Again, go to Wanda, and I have here prepared a case for that. So let's easily step by step go through it. This is the discharge frequency pattern, and basically it's a table which states for different discharge ranges how the amount of time this discharge range is demanded. Instead of this pattern, you can also enter a uh, other pattern that is uh, a time pattern. So just uh, the time on the x-axis and the discharge on the uh, the y-axis. But you can choose yourself which date depends on which data you have available. So in this case, I'm using the the discharge frequency pattern. Second thing that you have to put in is the system characteristic. You can see it's a nice parabolic curve, which has a, a static head of uh, 30 meters. And basically, yeah, you can calculate yourself, or as I said, you can use the system characteristic module to determine this one and just copy it in. Next thing, of course, you have to put in the pumps. And you have to put some uh, additional data for the pumps. You have to put in the minimum speed the maximum speed, and the maximum power which it can use. And the last thing, this is the pump oper operation scenario. And basically, it's a table which states for the different discharge ranges which pumps are operating. And now, I have to explain a little bit. If there is a number, which is not equal to zero, then it's the speed at which the pump is operating. So, for example, from zero to 200 
cubes per hour or the pump is operating at 1000 RPMs. If there is a zero, it doesn't mean that the pump is operating at a zero speed, but then the pump is operating at variable speed and the speed is determined to optimize the energy. And finally, if there is no number, this pump is not in operation. So basically it's a very simple uh, scheme which I implemented. So we start with only the first pump at 1000 RPM because uh, otherwise it has to run under its minimum speed which isn't feasible so that's why I'm specifying this. Then it's variable. Then at a little bit higher distance range we put on the second pump, then the third pump and then we're going to just increase the power we have available as you can see. So we have the first and the second pump, the first and the last pump, second and the third pump and all pumps are in operation. So that's a very basic scheme which yeah it's also it uh, sounds very logical to use this. Now we're going to look at the outputs and the most of course the most important one is here the energy usage. So at the moment for the frequency demand data we're giving in we're using 70 100 50 megawatt hours. So now let's see if we can decrease this number by making some changes to this schedule. But of course, yeah, we can start making random changes, but that's not working properly. So let's have a look at the efficiency. So what we have here is a graph. We can see on the, the this axis the discharge. And on this X is the efficiency. Now, as you can see, for the first part, it's not very efficient, but that's of course because if you really want to make it more efficient, you need a smaller pump, so we don't have that. You see here we have a jump at about 800 cubes per hour, because then the pump starts operating at uh, at a spec uh, not specified speed, so. It can change it. So, of course, we can see if we can change this jump and shift it a little bit more to the right. Because at the end, what you want is this efficiency curve, this light blue efficiency curve, to be as flat as possible. Because then you are at your best point. So, how we can do this is just saying. <coughs> so we have here at 800, we have a switch over from first pump to the second pump. So let's switch the second pump on a little bit sooner. So let's make this 500. Okay, we have some changes, but we also have here a warning, which is also important to look at. So let's open the information. You can see here in scenario row 3, required speed below minimum speed. So that means that it has to have a speed which is below the minimum speed which, I, which we have specified in the pump. So we can have also a look at that. So I'm just going to... You arrange everything a little bit. It's always nice with all the windows. So, and if we zoom here in, we see that this speed would be below the minimum speed. And you can see here it starts increasing. So, the 800 was an okay estimate to switch over. We cannot shift that. So, we have to pull that back. Otherwise, it's not a feasible operating point. So let's have a look at some other points. So for example, here you see also there's a jump from about 1500. Well, you can see maybe this can shift a little bit more. So let's see if we can increase this one. <coughs> okay, so you see the fish is increasing. There's no warning, so this is feasible. So let's increase it a little bit more. Oh, you're still okay. So that's nice. Let's see. Maybe we can just remove this row. See what happens there. So let me see. Remove this row. So okay. So maybe we can increase pump speed for the third pump and extend this a little bit more. Let's put it um, go to 22. And oh, that's still okay. Now if you look a little bit closer, we can see here these two pumps are doing, this is the operation of the last two pumps, they are really high efficiency. Maybe I can 
shift that a little bit, take that range to the left. And let's first just remove this one. You see immediately that, okay, this works. There's no warning, so this is a feasible uh, schedule. So now let's start shifting this a lot more to the left. So we have a point where it's not feasible anymore. So let's go to 1500. So that's not good enough. So let's zoom in in the speed graph and see, okay, about 1700, that should be feasible. So you can see, now it's nice flat and we have a nice transition. But here again, we have a jump, so maybe we can also optimize this jump by increasing this discharge. So let's put this a little bit higher. Okay. That's still working, so let's put it even higher. So now we get the message power limit exceeded. That means that the power which the pumps need is above the specified power in the pumps. So we also have a graph of the power. Can we zoom here on the end? And let's have a look at the second pump, which has a maximum power of 200 kilowatts. So let's have a look again at the graph. You can see here that the blue line is for the second pump. And here, at about 3,600, it's crossing through the 200. So that's the maximum which we can do for this one. So let's put that in. And that's, yeah, you cannot go any higher, so that's the maximum you can do. So, based on that, we can say, okay, this is the optimized pumping scenario. And we started with about 1750, and we are now at 1650. So, we saved with this about 100 megawatt hours. So, and that's for, well, how much time did it take? 10 to 5 minutes? So that's, I think, a quite good achievement. So it's not that difficult to do, and it can gain you a lot of power. And this is still probably a small example. You can easily go to bigger pumping stations and do the same, and just optimize your uh, uh, pumping schedule. So that was it for the things I want to show you. I want to uh, draw your attention to one la last thing, that's our Delft software days, which are going to be held from the 70, 27th of October to the 7th of November. And during this day, there are several WANDA courses where you can improve your WANDA sk skills. I'm seeing a mistyped word. So we first have a basic course from the 5th to the 5th, from the 4th and the 5th of November. And they have two more advanced courses on modeling and analysis. So if you have your build your model, how can uh, anal do analysis on your model, check your model, and items like that. And we have a second one on control, the uses of your control, the building of control systems, and looking at PID controllers. If you want uh, more info, you can go to the Delft Software Days site, which is mentioned here, and also reg registration uh, you can find on there. So I'd like to Thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, we'll be here around if you have any questions. You can still uh, ask them. And uh, later on this uh, webinar, we will also be um, put on YouTube so you can uh, view it later. Again, uh, thank you for your attention.